Welcome back to another video. This is another brand new opening that we've cooked up in the lab here. And yes, it's against E5. This one is for the white pieces. It's against the most common response in chess, E4, E5. So we're gonna start knight F3. The great thing about this opening is you will be able to get it pretty much every single time. After knight F3, the overwhelming majority of players play knight C6, of course. Now after knight c3, the thing is black doesn't really have bishop c5 as it's kind of known that knight takes e5 followed by d4 is a fantastic opening for white. This is kind of an opening trap. And because of that, black doesn't really have another move than knight f6. So you'll almost get this opening 100% of the time in your game. As long as you bring the two knights out and you see this position, the four knights, you've got it. This one is called well, on the streets, they call it the Pegasus Plunge, but we're calling it the Four Knights Trojan Horse Variation, Knight D5. Can you believe it? This is effectively untested. Knight D5 is not a move. Now, Pawn D4 takes followed by Knight D5 is a move. This is actually the Belgrade Gambit. The problem with this is a lot of people who know their theory understand that Knight B4 is a A plus move against this opening. Now, of course, it's still a playable opening. It's a really fun gambit to play, but what we're gonna do is just knight d5 immediately. And we have the benefit of being able to play d4 and transpose into that line, except there's no knight b4 for us to worry about. Knight b4 now is just silly. We have the e5 pawn hanging. We're about to take the center, all good stuff. So we're kind of eliminating black's best response to a popular gambit and we have other ideas with knight d5 as well almost nobody is going to take i've played a number of games in it so far testing it out and i can say the most common move people play is bishop c5 and it's definitely not one of the best bishop c5 because of course you want to play d6 to get the other bishop out you're not that interested in playing d6 yourself and blocking the bishop after bishop c5 we play c3, and immediately we want to play pawn to d4. So d6, for example, we can push. And after knight takes d5, because if we take back, black wants to give us check here, we have the very cool move. Palm collected, king e2. Yes. Oh, you'll feel like a show off when you get to uncork this one in a game. The knight's being attacked. Black has to move it. A check is kind of irrelevant and queen a4 check wins the bishop. How cool is that variation? And if the bishop just moves back, there's bishop g5, which is the whole point of the opening. We dash the knight into the d5 square early, then we have bishop g5, and there's no bishop e7 to unpin. Black is going to be saddled with these nasty double pawns. That's already a, an opening advantage right there. So a lot of people play bishop c5 and just kind of walk into d4. This is the whole point of the opening. Now, of course, you're thinking, okay, they don't have to play bishop c5. I promise you, it's quite common. You will see it a lot. They can definitely take here. This is, you know, the first thing you'd have to think about. But their e-pawn is going to be loose afterwards, plus queen e2 coming. And we can just go pawn to d4, even if they played knight to e7. We have a huge space advantage. Plus, most people are not going to be too prepared for this. So knight d5, knight takes e4 as well. And this is where after d4, we can kind of go back into the Belgrade Gambit. Perfect. If they take, this is essentially black going into one of the most complicated lines in that Gambit. Remember, there's no knight b4. Because of our move order, one of the best ways to handle that tricky Gambit is no longer possible. So instead, black's accepted both of our pawn sacrifices in the center so far, we have a great knight on d5, our queen's coming to e2, we're castling, already a very successful opening. I invite you to analyze the Belgrade Gambit yourself, but our move order is not always going to go into this, but the nice thing is you get a great aggressive game, tons of initiative, development, and easy, quick tactics that your opponent will probably fall into. Now, they don't have to do any of the above, but I've gone over what the most popular moves are, of course. They could just go bishop e7, d6, castle. But guess what? You're going to play moves like d4 anyway. 
your bishop's gonna come to c4, you're gonna castle. And so even if your opponent plays like, you know, really, really boring, uneventful, you can just keep playing like this, bring the rook to the center. Yeah, you might trade, but guess what? You have more space, you've already occupied the center, and your opponents are gonna respond to this opening in a variety of different ways. A lot, a lot of traps that they could walk into. And even if they don't, it's not like you have a bad position. Just a normal e45, four knights game, nothing to complain about. So I got this opening a few times, some you know chaotic positions and some more boring like what we see here. I have a few games for you guys to look at to get an idea how to play the opening, how it can work. And remember, you're not playing these openings just for tricks, they're actually good anyway. So another uh, new one for you guys to try and it's against e45, so you should be able to get it, like I said, pretty much every single game. Have a look at these uh, games that I played against some very strong players on chess.com in the three minute pool, and hopefully it inspires you to play it yourself. Can we do the unthinkable and start Title Tuesday with a win? Going with the old Knight D5. Tried and tested, baby. Oh, yeah. Knight D5. He's perplexed. And he should be. <laughs> E6, boo this man, boo. Jeez. They talk about low T, talk about this guy. I mean, I don't know. I guess this is the only uh, logical move to keep like the uh, same threats intact. Cause this looks a little bit sketchy. So probably this. could take here and take there and c5. I don't think there's any reason to do that. Takes takes, bishop f6, we'll step back with the queen. I feel like we're doing okay, not nothing special. funny when you play knight d5 most people default to like a very equalizing type of thing like they don't they don't want any any funny stuff happening it should be three we have to deal with this i don't think that's worth it so we should play this 
Probably he's gonna go bishop here or something. It's all right though. Take with the queen, c6, queen back. Could be something. Take with the pawn, he just goes a6. But here, a6, bishop a7, c6, queen here. Kind of looks like something. Yeah, okay. So he has to play that. That's, I mean,. It's not outrageous for me, but something. Mind going here, guarding this. I just like this pawn structure for the end game, but that's about it. I don't think this is as easy as he thinks. Go B4. Takes B5 and King D5. Same color Bishop Endgame Specialist right here. <laughs> and what was I gonna do? What was I gonna do? Mess up, uh... Mess up a 95 game? Hell no. All right. Ah, he's chosen this. He's chosen this fate. Pegasus Plunge. A 
H6, the Pegasus Plunge. He actually stopped Bishop G5 low key. see anything there. I don't want my queen to be attacked. After this, I want to play this. But he sees that. He doesn't see that at all. Ooh. Boy, got plunged. Has to be over. On takes f6. I think that's pretty much GG. I mean, the best he can do is sack the queen. He can play 96, but... We can also do some checks. A slight scare, but still completely mating. <laughs> still completely mating. <laughs> Probably smarter just not to allow it. My guy just got plunged. That's like exactly how it should go. But this, oh, but this was still H6. Right when you think you're preventing the plunge. Boom. There's a leak. Call the plumber. Oof. Queen C2. Finesse. The problem with this one is they can take with the queen. So I have to do it where the queen's not attacked. And he just he didn't even see it. Yeah, should have just moved the king, but. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. Uh.